We have uh, been impressed with the advances made in understanding the oral systemic or the periosystemic relationships that are based upon inflammation, of course, but now with the ability to sequence the organisms and study the complete microbiome, we have some new insights which may lead to mechanism. And one example is uh, cardiovascular disease, which of course is a complication of, of diabetes. And uh, a dozen years ago, we showed four periodontal organisms in the atheroma. Now, using these DNA techniques, <coughs> the atheromas have a complete microbiome. Uh, some of the organisms appear to be related to the oral cavity, some to the gut, and some to the skin. So this gives us a new perspective on maybe what they might be doing in cardiovascular disease and the association with periodontal disease. And I know you've done a lot of work in, in diabetes. Has, has the microbiome affected uh, those uh, studies yet, or, or are you still uh, very much emphasizing the inflammatory mediators? Yeah, I think that's it's a great question, and it's a, a really evolving and emerging research area. Um, I think you're right. For the last uh, 10 or 15 years, there's been a very strong focus on the inflammatory links between diabetes and periodontitis. And there was um, a general presumption that the, the bacteria, the microbiome, did not play a huge role in increased susceptibility to periodontitis in people with diabetes or the links between the two conditions. And, and that was probably based on, on fairly outdated methodolo methodologies now, um, uh, culturing techniques and so on. Um, but with the new molecular techniques that have been used, we are starting to see differences in the microbiome between people with diabetes and people who do not have diabetes. Um, and as we know, the interplay between the, 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 the bacteria, the biofilm, the microbiome, and the inflammatory response is key in driving the disease process of periodontitis. So I think there's a, there's a very strong and exciting possibility that as technology develops and research moves forward, um, that we'll identify uh, potentially uh, patterns within the microbiome, um, inflammatory uh, status, which interact um, in a meaningful way to increase the susceptibility to both conditions. And, and then what gets really exciting is that that gives us the opportunity to try to modify and influence uh, not just inflammation, also the microbiome as a, as a means of trying to treat uh, periodontitis more effectively. Yes, I'm impressed with our ability over the last hundred years to do something about the microbiome. Uh, we know how to control infections. Uh, maybe we've overused antibiotics, but they certainly work. Uh, we know about probiotics and their potential. We know about prebiotics. We know about vaccination. So it does bring up a whole new realm of possible treatment effects. I think that I'd like your opinion on this. It's not going to be either or. It might be both. For example, I'm impressed with a recent paper that showed this uh, organism, Acrosmania mucinophilia. A mucinophilia. It's reduced in the gut flora of diabetics. Apparently what the bug does is it binds to the mucin and increases the mucin production and decreases the permeability of the gut. So with lower levels of this organism, the there's less mucin and greater permeability and now the LPS leaks through in diabetics and causes inflammation. So there's a, there's a, a, you know, a combination of the bacteria increasing permeability, permeability then leading to more inflammatory response, which leads to insulin resistance. Yeah, so yeah. I think, you, you know, you're probably right. It's going to be both. Yeah. I think we, we, we will probably move away from treating the mouth in isolation. I mean, that, that's what my sincere hope, um, that the dental profession will move forward. We, we talk about the concept of the oral physician, and we have done for a number of years. But I, I think for the, for the practicing dentist and dental hygienist and therapist, uh, there's, there's still um, the feeling that they're dealing with the mouth only. And that's, that's what I think is so important, especially about this Europerio conference. Uh, such an exciting way forward is really expanding the opportunities and the roles of dental professionals in not just treating oral and dental disease, but having a benefit beyond the mouth. Yes. Um, and I, I think that will be a, a real legacy from this meeting 
uh, to, treat, to try to understand better the, the important role that we can have in, as part of overall healthcare management. Yes, two years ago when we had the workshop on oral systemic here uh, in, in Spain, the, that was the emphasis, of course, as you remember, and there were some guidelines. Uh, uh, what do you think the pro progress has been made in terms of, let's say, convincing or influencing our counterparts in medicine to uh, be aware of periodontal disease and do something about it? Is there much progress made in, in Europe? I think there is. I think we're moving in the right direction. Um, there are more and more editorials appearing in medical journals about periodontitis. What is it and, and why should the medics know about it? Um, the evidence that periodontal treatment can reduce um, HbA1c, uh, in other words, improve glycemic control, uh, when you explain that to diabetologists and our medical colleagues, uh, they, they suddenly get quite interested. Um, because periodontal treatment is it's a, a non-drug intervention. Um, it's easy to perform, relatively. Um, it's, it's something that uh, is not associated with drug interactions, uh, such as um, additional drug therapies might be. Um, and the improvements in HbA1c that have been reported um, following periodontal therapy are similar to the improvements that are achieved by some of the second-line drug therapies. Um, so I think once you start having conversations with um, our medical colleagues and engaging them with them in a meaningful way, they, they suddenly see the potential and they get quite interested and quite excited. Um, and there's a number of us uh, periodontal researchers around the world who are linking up and making, um, uh, establishing collaborations with uh, medics. And I think this is the way forward, uh, working in larger teams to really improve the general health and the oral health of, of people with diabetes uh, in, a, in a planned and all-encompassing ma manner. Yes, I, my experience with uh, uh, physicians, uh, diabetologists, is that they know, they understand the relationship, but they don't know really what to do about it. Yeah. One of the problems is the, uh, the difficulty in diagnosing a periodontal disease in a medical office. So as you know, the American Academy of Perio and CDC developed these questions, and these are being tested in, in diabetes uh, practices, and they seem to work quite well to be added to, to the form. Uh, the other thing, and I'd like to know what's happening here in Europe, in the U.S. now, in the American Diabetes Clinical Practice Guidelines, periodontal disease is listed as a comorbidity. Mm -hmm. We'd love to have it as a risk factor, but it's a comorbidity. That's a step in the right direction. And with the uh, uh, suggestion that it be dealt with, that it be mm -hmm. uh, diagnosed and treated, uh, and that the physician make sure that happens. What, what is happening in, in Europe? It's quite variable. Um, there are national guidelines in many of the different European countries on the management of diabetes. And uh, for example, in the United Kingdom, of course, my own country, uh, we have an organization called NICE, uh, the National Institute of Clinical Excellence, which provides guidance for the management of all sorts of conditions, um, including diabetes. Um, and at the present time, sadly, periodontitis is not listed in that guidance, um, even though, of course, we've made representations to that organization. I, I think the, um, the main uh, importance, uh, the, the main thing that we need to be doing is really generating data and evidence that convinces our colleagues um, in, in the, uh, the medical fraternity of the importance of being aware of periodontal uh, disease and the need for treatment. And it's just going to come from hard evidence, uh, good quality science, um, the, the, the types of evidence that are being presented at this meeting. Um, and over time, my hope is that that information will, will sink in uh, and we'll start to see changes, uh, as you've mentioned, in the USA in some of the national guidance. So we have the same, same problem. They want the hard evidence. Yeah. And of course, th that really has to happen. Yeah. I'm a bit optimistic that the microbiome studies will provide some more evidence that we didn't have before. At least it's a new approach. So I'm, I'm uh, optimistic that that will uh, be fruitful in yes. convincing our colleagues to yeah. uh, encourage interprofessional management of patients with both diseases, periodontal disease and diabetes. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged. Yeah.